Throughout this film, we will be dissecting the effect Xanax has on neurotransmitters. We will go into detail about what a neurotransmitter does. Furthermore, we will specify on the neurotransmitter GABA. We will proceed to explain what Xanax does and how it both positively and negatively affects the body. When neurotransmitters are released, they help control a wide variety of bodily functions, including movement, heart rate, sleep, thinking, reasoning, or even your mood. Here's how neurotransmitters work. Each neuron is composed of axons, dendrites, and cell bodies. An electrical impulse moves down the axon, a long slender tube that functions like an antenna and is transferred to neurotransmitters such as serotonin or dopamine. The neurotransmitter then travels across a synapse or gap to a dendrite of another neuron which receives the neurotransmitter and absorbs it into its cell body. Under normal circumstances, there is just the right amount of a neurotransmitter sent across the gap to communicate with other neurons. GABA is known as an inhibitory neurotransmitter. This means that when it reaches the receptor site of a neuron, it reduces the activity level of that neuron and makes it less likely to fire an electrical signal, also known as action potential. When both GABA-A and a benzodiazepine are bound to the receptor, more chloride ions enter the postsynaptic cell, increasing GABA's normal effect, meaning the inhibitor is multiplied. Xanax is used to treat anxiety disorders. Its actual name, alprazolam, is a benzodiazepine, a depressant. Xanax is often taken anywhere from three to four times a day. While it may prove beneficial to some patients, this is a highly addictive medication. Side effects include drowsiness, headaches, irritability, dry mouth, changes in sex drive, constipation, difficulty urinating, and more. Xanax affects the central nervous system because as a depressant, it reduces nerve impulses ultimately affecting communication within the brain. It reduces the electrical flow within the brain and can also reduce cerebral blood flow. According to Peter Bregan, an Ithaca-based psychiatrist and author of Toxic Psychiatry, long-term use can cause cognitive impairment, which in turn can cause memory loss, dependence, and more severe cases of anxiety. In a study from 1990 on the effectiveness of Xanax in reducing panic attacks, Dr. Lapola and his colleagues found that panic attack frequency was reduced from around 6 per week to less than 1 attack per week after only 3 weeks of treatment. Patients' general symptoms of anxiety also decreased significantly. After 9 weeks, only 22% of participants reported having adverse effects or drug-induced side effects, compared to 52% of participants initially reporting adverse effects as a result of their anxiety. The use of benzodiazepines, alprazolam to be exact, is effective and a common approach towards a panic disorder. However, it can diminish the effectiveness of therapy. In order for the therapy to benefit the patient post-therapy, minimum to no usage of benzodiazepines is ideal. In a study from the Journal of Consulting and Clinical Psychology, Timothy Bruce, David Siegel, and Mark Hegel explained that a concern for treatment providers has been how to manage these medications within exposure-based therapies given the risks that they pose to post-treatment recovery. The fear is that patients will grow a dependence on those benzodiazepines to deal with their anxiety. Once the medication is no longer in use, the patient's symptoms will return and therapy will not have proved helpful. Xanax also affects the patient's decision making. In a study from 2005, Scott Lane, Oleg Tirkmasin, Lori Leaving, Sylvan Nuvian, and Don Sherrick found that Xanax increased a person's likelihood of making risky decisions. The increase also scaled with the dosage of the drug, with higher dosages producing a higher probability of risky behavior. Dr. John Steinberg is an addictions medicine specialist at the University of Maryland. The worst thing about this drug was the failure to perceive how difficult it would be to stop, how intensely people would be attracted to it. When did you sense something was wrong? When I tried to stop taking it, when I skipped it during the day. I'd start to feel un that uncomfortableness that I felt was a Valium withdrawal, and I got real frightened. I felt that I was addicted. I, I felt I had a problem. Couldn't you have just said, I've had enough, and stopped taking Xanax? I tried. I had tried to do it with Valium, and I had a seizure. 
and I did it once with Xanax and had a grand mal seizure that they didn't think I would live through. So I knew that I couldn't just stop. Our society seems to have forgotten the initial reasons for why Xanax was created. Its ability to increase the level of GABA inhibitors in the brain's neurons is often taken advantage of by those with anxiety. Xanax and other benzodiazepines can be viewed as an easy way out of an uncomfortable psychological disorder. When one's body becomes accustomed to the drug, you become dependent. Xanax was once initially created for serious psychological situations in order to substitute for the chemical imbalance of those in need.